Cards Against Humanity is a party game version of Mad Libs updated to meet the comedy standards of current year. Many people are familiar with it, and it's something that typically gets brought up in social gatherings of four to eight people. The game was constructed by eight friends who wanted to make a game for New Year's Eve, and it took much inspiration from another game called Apples to Apples. The original game they made was called Cardenfreud, but later on the game evolved and was put on Kickstarter, and the popularity rose from there. Now that these young entrepreneurs have entered well into adulthood, they have made an interesting decision. The company, Cards Against Humanity, has purchased land across the U.S.-Mexico border that they're planning on holding on to in form of protest. I don't know if they have heard of eminent domain before, but as I remember it, the government will just take your land at gunpoint, or hypothetical gunpoint, for a fraction of what it's worth. I'm willing to admit that I might not be an expert on the complications of law and the government seizing private property, but I'm not certain that the creators of this card game are either, or if they've even considered the gravity of their actions. Cards Against Humanity also set up a holiday special that has already sold out in order to help pay against the wall. Let's go ahead and take a look at their website. The first part is pretty straightforward. You give us $15, hurry, we'll frantically stuff envelopes, you'll get six surprises in the mail next month, and then America will be saved. Or to be more clearly, America will be prevented from being great again. Day one preview, Cards Against Humanity stops the wall. Donald Trump is a preposterous golem who is afraid of Mexicans. He is so afraid that he wants to build a $20 billion wall that everyone knows will accomplish nothing. And if that's true, we should all get rid of our doors and all of our fences, and possibly all of the locks on our vehicles as well. So we've purchased a plot of vacant land on the border and retained a law firm specializing in eminent domain. Okay, so they do know a little bit. They came prepared to make it as time-consuming and expensive as possible for the wall to get built. So they are just trying to obstruct the law. That's something. On day one... All Cards Against Humanity Saves America recipients will get an illustrated map of the land, a certificate of our promise to fight the wall, some new cards, and a few other surprises. There is also a frequently asked questions area, and I'll go ahead and let that scroll right here. I don't really feel like it's worth reading out loud, but this way you can check it out if you would like. How kind of a person or a group, even a company, to use their wealth and influence to undermine one of the defining reasons almost half the country voted for President Trump. Cards Against Humanity is acting similar to that of Kim Davis, the government worker who refused to sign marriage licenses to homosexuals. To me, what she did and what these people are doing are one and the same thing. Ironically, the Reddit mobs that rose their pitchforks against Kim Davis are now raising them in support of Cards Against Humanity. To me, it seems like these people who support this have no sense of principles, but rather an emotional attachment to one side that they perceive as just and true. I would like to take a moment to thank everybody who supports the channel, as it has grown significantly over the past few months. Special thanks to the patrons, a few new ones over the past few days even. I really appreciate the support and the feedback. Don't hold back from letting me know if I get something wrong. I try to be as honest as possible, and if I am mistaken on something, I would like to know, not just for myself, but to whoever I might tell. So thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you all later.